when I was in Boulder, I met a friend of mine that I hadn't seen for 25 years and uh, asked him what he was up to. And what he's doing is he's founded a company called Rocky Mountain Media Watch. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they have 150 people who work for them in 150 cities. And once a week, these people make a... Uh, video cassette off the TV of the out, the evening news, the local evening news hour, and they ship all these tapes to Boulder, and they have rooms full of people watching these things on screens and scoring uh, how much of this hour went to ecological stories, how much went to lost pet stories, how much went to toxic waste stories, how much went to the circuses in town stories. And I said, well, Paul, what is the deal with uh, violence and what's going on? And he said, whoa, it's very simple. We've seen it thousands and thousands of times. The most In a half-hour show, the most violent part of the show uh, occurs uh, immediately before the longest commercial. Mm -hmm. And the you are brought to this state of adrenal excitement and I said well do people enjoy watching people shot and blown up and he said no no you can put electrodes on them and you can tell that it raises anxiety and it raises adrenaline levels but he said the whole point is then you cut to the commercial you bring on images of sexuality of flesh of soft music and of the product and the product then becomes associated with a security. It's all about, look at this horrible death, manglement, horror, now, and this wonderful soap which will give you social confidence and make your hair shiny and your underarms inoffensive. And, uh, and this game is played three or four hundred times a night with monkeys on the receiving end, you know, people who, who you know, take Ross Perot seriously and fear visits by alien proctologists, <laughs> that population are, uh, you know, being subject to this hammering stimulus response thing. Well, it's no, it's no wonder that people are just totally clueless. The cultural engines are becoming... Uh, almost unmanageably dangerous for the unsophisticated. This is what I meant last night when I said there are two kinds of people. There are artists and marks. Not in a, in a tone of superiority, we're the artists and we're on the inside and so uh, we're immune and the marks, fuck them, they're all lost souls. No, every one of us every day is tested to see are you an artist or are you a mark? In this moment, are you an artist or are you a mark? In this situation, are you an artist or are you a mark? And, you know, everybody tumbles both ways several times a day. Beca and uh, uh, I don't know exactly what to do about it. I mean, Joseph Goebbels really turned it loose inside the 20th century. I mean, this has all been developed since the 30s, you know, advertising techniques, techniques of behavior modification, ways of insinuating uh, complex messages <clears throat> into people and getting them to respond. The antidote is, uh, in that environment, you cannot flee from it. You cannot avoid it. What you have to do is produce output, output into this ocean of competing means. Output and, uh, and subversion and sophistication. You have to be, I think, very, very... Uh, this is no environment for the credulous, the epistemologically naive, uh, those driven by inner imbalances to uh, adoration and belief. I mean, I really believe, I think I said last night, uh, salvation through uh, skepticism, hope through skepticism.
uh, because uh, it's too difficult to tell what's going on. The only reliable indicators in this world are feelings and mathematics. And mathematics has been torn from you as an option in the process of infantilization that we're denouncing here. So all you have left are your feelings, 90% of us.